This is the 29th video of Wargame Design Studios 1864 Virginia campaign. I am playing the Union and the game's artificial intelligence is playing the Confederates. <coughs> if I uh, cough every once in a while it's uh, because of allergies <coughs> just so you know uh, the trees are starting to bud out and that's always a bad time for me allergy wise so I'll probably cough and sneeze every once in a while the, the, if you hear background noise that's the furnace it just turned on it's an old uh, fuel oil furnace so the blower makes a bit of noise when it first starts up but it should uh, get a little better in a couple minutes it is May 5th, 1864, 5.30 a.m., turn 43 out of 1,390 turns. It's a long game. And uh, it's the Union Movement phase. So let us get to it. Oop, let's see where I am. It's very easy to get lost on this map because it's 1.1 million hexes. That's right. These guys haven't moved. This is the six core. They've moved. They haven't. Okay. This is where we left off. Let's get rid of these yellow hexes. We'll turn off objectives. Okay. Now we're finally starting to cross the Rappahannock Six Core. Uh, let me shut off this. Ah, shit. Let me shut off this sound. Otherwise, we'll be hearing dings all over the place. So we've got four cores in the Union Army at this point. We've got the fifth core under Warren, and that's uh, guarding the crossing of the second core under Hancock. And now we have the sixth core under Sedgwick. And behind him, the Ninth Corps under Burnside. And the Ninth Corps is, was not really part of the Army of the Potomac, but it was attached to it. And later it becomes part of the Army. Trouble is, Burnside, who was in command, of the Ninth Corps and former commander of the Army of the Potomac for a while, he outranked Meade. So he refused to receive orders from Meade. So Grant could not incorporate the Ninth Corps in the Army of the Potomac. He had to make it a, sever a separate entity reporting directly to him. And after a while, Grant changed his mind because Burnside was fairly incompetent, so he made him report to Meade whether he liked it or not. Now there's one other corps that'll be joining the Army. Uh, I can't remember the corps number, but it's under, I think it was under Baldy Smith. But that won't be for a while. Uh, 
Oh, and we may get Butler's Corps later on. Because he, he was the one that was bottled up in Bermuda 100. But I don't know where Lee is. I think I'm moving past him. But you never know. This fog of war makes things really interesting because you can only see what your units can see. And if for some reason, like woods or a low ridge or something else uh, blocking the line of sight and you can't see the units or your, your, any of your forces can, cannot see the units, then you can't either. And it's the same thing for uh, artificial intelligence. So this gives a real sense of realism and excitement that you just can't get from a board game. I've probably got a hundred board games and uh, ever since I got into these electronic ones about nine months ago, I haven't even looked at them, and I doubt if I ever will. I should think about selling them, because a lot of them are like rare games now, but uh, it takes a lot of work. But I've got like War in Europe, I've got a couple of those, I've got a couple, must be three. No, three war in Europe's. So I got a couple war in the Pacifics. I got a bunch of other stuff. TSS, Terrible Swift Sword, uh, War Between the States. A lot of interesting games, but. And I got all those French tactical ones. But uh, War Game Design Studio has all the major French battles, all the Civil War battles. So I've got all those games. And they have a lot of the World War II ones. I wish I'd get into Ancients or medieval, like the Crusades, but I'm just not into that. But there are other companies that are. So I've got those games, it's just I don't have time to play them now. up having a strong index finger for play by playing these games because you're doing a lot of mouse clicking. Now this is pretty good because you can click on the beginning and click on the end and it'll move there. But there are some of these early games, especially Battle of the Bulge, where you got to click hex by hex. And boy, that does wear out your fingers. But in this game, there's a lot more movement than in other games. Because here you're... You're not in close proximity when you start. So the map is so big and there's so many different strategies you can have unless you really do some good scouting you're not going to have contact. And I don't think artificial intelligence is capable of doing scouting because 
at least at this time, AI makes its decisions based on algorithms which tell them what to do if certain units show up in certain areas. But if no units show up, I think AI doesn't know what to do because you actually have to think. And an algorithm, I suppose they could develop one, which would say, well, I don't see anybody and I know the enemy's coming from the east, so I should send out a scout on all roads running to the east, major roads, let's say, to see if the enemy's coming down any one of them. I would think you could write an alg al algorithm for that, but apparently you don't have one. So it just sits there, I think, and that's what I think is happening. In a couple of turns, I'm going to send out some cavalry to go find him and see what the hell he's doing. Then they may react. I don't know. But if I didn't do that, I might get all the way to Richmond. They wouldn't react. So AI has some limitations, but I've seen an AI robot. What the hell's its name? From Amiga or something like that. I think it's from the UK, which can carry on a conversation with a person. I suppose it's a limited one, but still, you look at uh, Generation Z, they can't carry on one for the most part. They're too stupid. So a robot is probably smarter than them right now. I mean, when they go in for a job interview, they bring their mommy. Christ, who does that? And they won't look up at anybody's eyes. They look down at their shoes. And I guess if they have to talk, they show them their phone and there's like emojis they string together. Kind of like the ancient Egyptians when they had all those hieroglyphs. That's the capabilities of Generation Z. It's no wonder employees don't want to hire them. They're too stupid and they're too lazy. But the robot is, I think, probably superior to them right now. But robotics is is going to go much farther, like in the next five years. Because it's going to remember like a thousand times more than any person can remember. And it is going to be able to engage in conversation because it will have a huge database. People now... They have a very small one because they aren't that smart. You go to someone's home and you ask them, do you have any books here? They'll say no. So I think most of them don't know how to read or they don't want to spend the time reading. They'd rather be smoking dope. But, you know, in time, they won't have a job. Robots will be doing everything. And I don't know what the hell they're going to do. Be like in India, you just go out on the street and drop dead and the garbage man will scrape up your bones and throw you in a hole. And that's it. This guy should move out. I remember when I was wargaming in California in the 70s, even in the 80s. Jesus, a lot of really smart people played war games. You'd meet lawyers and you know, military men and uh, businessmen, vice presidents, and you'd be sitting with them wargaming. Guys were smart. They knew their history. They knew their military history. They could think. 
We used to debate the rules sometimes. We'd play over at my place because I had a lot of tables we could set up war in Europe. And we'd debate a rule sometimes. There'd be a half a dozen lawyers there and other people debating the rules for three hours. We'd debate one rule sometimes. Could this have happened? You know, is this is this rule fantasy or is it uh, based on reality? And the conversations were interesting. We had one guy who was kind of a savant. You know, he wouldn't say anything for a long time. He'd just listen. People thought, oh, are you still awake? What the hell is your problem? And all of a sudden, he would talk. And he was, like, brilliant. I mean, the lawyers, in fact, trial lawyers that were real high-end shysters, you know, that earned probably a million dollars a year. They were dumbfounded by his logic. And it just took them a while to get going. But damn, that was one smart guy. So you got to meet a lot of different people. I don't know how it is now. I think most of war gaming is like this. People are playing against AI. I mean, there are some people that still play games, but it's so much more convenient. You know, you just feel you have an hour or two, and, you know, you you feel like doing this. It's like playing chess, really, a huge game of chess. You just turn on the computer and you can play. You don't have to wait for anybody. Uh, you know, you don't have to uh, set anything up. And if you want, after 15 minutes, you don't want to play anymore, you don't. You don't have to. Like, we, Christ, we used to go to these conventions. We used to, they used to take us like two hours or something to set up the game. We had it all written down. And then when you're done, you had to take it down. You had to write everything down. And here you don't do that. You want to start a new game? You pick another scenario. It's already set up. You start. You want to continue this game? You save it. You just pull it up next time, and you you go where you left off. I mean, it's beautiful. And AI is getting better and better. Humans are getting stupider, but AI is getting more and more intelligent. So, like I said, it surpasses, I think, a lot of humans already, because at least in the U.S., more more than half the people are, are truly stupid. They're like Joe Biden, imbeciles. That's how we get people like uh, Calfart Cortez and uh, Mad Max Waters. That's how we get imbeciles elected. Imbeciles elect them. And so we've got a lot of really stupid people, more stupid than intelligent people in this country, which is a shame, but, you know, that's how a country disintegrates, and this, that's what's happening in the U.S. It's a decline and fall. They're, de they're in decline right now, and they're going to stay there because the people are too stupid to reverse it. So it's going to be a cataclysmic crash, just cataclysmic. you got dummies that cry when they experience difficulty, and they sob. And there's going to be a hell of a lot of difficulties now that America's losing control and it's on the downslide. We've got a lot of welfare bums coming in across the border. I think 10 million of them so far. Who the hell's going to pay them when nobody's got any money? And, you know, you don't need guys to pick peaches when you're, uh, when you got automated machines that do all that stuff. So what jobs they get? Dishwashers? Well, you got dishwasher. And then the restaurants are going out of business because no one can, can afford to go there anymore. So you won't have to worry about dishwasher jobs. Uh, so it's a sad state of affairs. But we brought it on ourselves. God damn, there's a lot of Ninth Corps. Guess this is the artillery now. Who 
only two batteries. I guess there's more with what's already there with the core. God, I gotta wait for these guys though. That's a pain in the ass. I gotta catch this railroad and then we go straight down. Okay. I wonder if they, I can entrain these guys up. I should try that. Set them down the rail. Uh, I'll give that a try. Okay. I'd say that's it. Let's go on to the next phase. Go over here so I can see if anybody runs into anybody. Can't cover all the roads, but I think I covered the major ones. But you never can tell. Someone slips by Union Melee, okay. Confederate movement. Let's see how long he moves. He might just be moving cavalry around. That's it. So far, I haven't seen any long moves. Hmm. Yeah, see, that was short. Uh, we'll sniff them out in a while. I just got to get the cavalry to the head of my army. The way the stupid deployment was, they were all in back. All right, here's Union movement. Uh, we're covering the crossings down here, so I missed one before. So these guys are all set. Where was that one I missed? Up here. Here it is. This guy. Oh. Got to get the artillery to the side. I don't want artillery going first. This artillery. Um, going down this way. These, this division and this brigade are in reserve for the moment. OK. 
Okay, we've got the infantry making for Telegraph Road. Ah, oh, we're finally on it. We can head down to the crossing, which is a little to the south. This is where we're going to take position. Wish I had some artillery. I may have to borrow a horse artillery battery from the cavalry. So I don't think the core, if I drop off a battery at each crossing, I don't think I'm going to have any left over. Further north here is the cavalry. It'll drop down. Ooh, look at them go. They'll lag behind the infantry till we get to the crossing and then they'll they'll head west to see where the Confederate army is. Okay, now we've got some supply wagons headed that way. Oh, shit. Let me shut off the uh, map labels. They're covering up some units here I need to see. Most of these supply units go to the crossing of the Telegraph Road with the Po River. The rest of these on the left will go to the various crossings that are being guarded. This is a rear guard for the supply, so this should be the end of the uh, second core. Okay, we got a couple supply units on ahead here. They move slow. But as soon as I move these, that'll be the end of the second core movement. I'll just have to take a quick look to make sure that there's not, there's not something I overlooked. Oh, we're good. All right, let's go up to the fifth core. 
Now we're passing through the fifth core supply. Oh, let me turn on the map labels. We're going to Zion Church with it. Most of it. We're leaving enough supply behind to fight a rear guard action. Problem is, if you leave too much supply behind, then what happens is your uh, you're having to guard it because it's moving so slow and you lose a lot of casualties and the odds are it can be captured real easy so I, I want to get it out of the way and then behind this supply We've got another cavalry division that was doing rear guard duty. And they'll, uh, they'll follow the supply. To a point where I can get ahead of it. Where's that cavalry division? Oh, look at it. It's way out here. Okay. We got this guy in column. That's good. We're going to get him off the road. Allow this cavalry to make time. How come these guys are moving so slow? Oh, he's only used half of his movement. How come he can't move any faster? Oh, don't tell me one of those stupid leaders are dismounted. You get that every once in a while. They won't even give him a donkey. Come on. Christ. Let me shut him off and see now if he moves. The rest of his movement. Where is that bastard? Yeah, I'll have to figure out which guy is riding a jackass. Maybe he's not, he's just walking. Let's see which one it is. They don't give movement. Looks like it's the first one. Yeah, who was that? Oh, you got to be kidding. It's the Calvary guy? Let's see if the second one. He's okay. <laughs> Look at this. I'll do these one at a time. They're all moving except that top guy, Chapman. Yep. No oh, wells. Yeah. He doesn't even get a jackass to ride. He's in the cavalry and he's uh, he's going by foot. Yeah, they think a lot of him. Well, maybe he's stupid and they don't want him to keep up. 
could be a good way to do it. Okay, that's it for the fifth core. Now we go to the crossing for the sixth core. Now I think as soon as I get out of the woods, I gotta tighten up this core. They're too spread out. I don't like units being spread out like this. And the six core is going to pass right by the fifth and the second core. Then it's going to cross the uh, Po River at Telegraph Road and keep going and stake out another position to guard against the Confederates. And then the fifth core will pass once the ninth core and the baggage gets through it'll pass by the army and form its spearhead so we're just going to have rotating cores here performing guard duty as we go down towards richmond Instead of just going down a road like dummies and getting attacked unexpectedly, we're going to have strong patrols out. That'll fight the Confederates before they get near the Union line of advance. Hopefully. Well, let's change the scale on this so I don't flub up. Still dealing with the second core here, or the sixth core, yeah. Guys, all six core. Yeah. Here's the ninth core. This is six core. This is the first ninth core unit. Okay.
drop this unit one short so I can see where the ninth core starts. Yeah, these are all ninth core units. Excuse me. It's the allergy. Ah, oh, shit. This guy went in the woods. No, oh, he's still got movement, though. Okay. Maybe he can get out. That's what happens when you sneeze. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, hay fever is here. It always happens when the trees start to bud out, which is happening now around here. As soon as they, they bud out, now I'm okay. But they're probably spitting out a lot of pollen. Okay, let's see if this guy can get back on. Nope. Ah, uh, shit. I thought this guy would go further. Oh, he can get on, but I'll probably forget there's two units there. Oh, good! Excellent! All right. There are two units, and you move them, and like it's on the woods, it won't acknowledge they're on road movement because there's two units there, so they'll both get disordered. It's happened to me many times.
Okay. Now oh, those guys are fixed. Oh, it's just these two units here. See if we get anybody else. Nope. God, we're on turn 44. Confederate movement. Yeah, you have to have a lot of, a lot of patience playing this game. moving very little. spread out you can see Telegraph Road here it goes all the way to Richmond okay we'll put this battery right on the road uh, we'll unlimber. We'll turn it one click. Excellent. These guys are all set, except they've got to get their artillery. And here it comes. Last two batteries. Oh, this isn't going to be much good now. I'll just have to scroll around. Okay, what I'm going to do... I'm going to tighten these guys up. And I'm going to let the cavalry pass through. Geez, this guy's cavalry too. Oh, no, he isn't. He's that damn aide. I should get him up front. OK. 
Okay. Now oh, go, man, go. Oh, yeah. Zip right on through. Okay, so the crossing is right there. And the cavalry will go down here. Right across there and see how far we have to go to find Confederates. Oh, we've got some supply units headed here. Where the hell are they? There they are. Got a ways to go. Shit. <laughs> we got 59 minutes. Uh, I'm not going to finish. Okay, we'll stop it here and continue on tomorrow.